Today here on Robostrip.net and 10 minute test drive, we are outside Del Mar, California, driving the new five door Toyota Corolla. This is a replacement for the IM, and it's going to do battle against the likes of, you know, Ford Focus five door, Mazda three, um, and Golf and a few others. In fact, Golf is what this thing was benchmarked against. So, how does this new Corolla compare? And should you consider it? Because, you know, Toyota. Fun? Yes? Possibly? That's what we find out next on rumblestrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive. Alright, so we're hustling a uh, Toyota Corolla 5 door here with the manual. We've driven the CVT as well. And uh, we were given the car for about half there's only three manuals that they brought with them and every of course everyone wants to buy it you know, everyone wants to drive it so see um, and coming out to where we were gonna shoot some photos we couldn't get to in a lot of time and now we got to hustle back and shoot the video is traffic in Southern California sucks as well wow, that's a bombshell for anyone who's ever been here right well yesterday when we were driving the Avalon it wasn't as bad but today holy crap it's bad um, we went like 10 miles without getting out of second gear. Uh, I think that's a Sammy Hagar song, right? Anyways, uh, so Toyota Corolla 5-door. Uh, what do we think? In general, this is pretty solid. Uh, it's built off the TNGA platform, so first off, good. And for those of you not familiar, think of Toyota's TNGA sort of like uh, VW's MQB platform. A lot of stuff built off of it. That's a good, solid foundation, and pretty much anything you drive off of that has been good. The first thing we drove off TNGA was the Prius, and you're like, oh, wow, a Prius good to drive. No, well, compared to the old Prius, it was amazing. Uh, but it's a pretty solid vehicle. Uh, the, we drove the uh, Camry, and we've also driven the CHR, which are also built off this platform. Avalon yesterday we drove, also built off this platform, and now we get this. So, you see what Volkswagen's doing. And they're all going to drive differently, but they have a similar feel, and it's a good it's a good overall chassis. So, four wheel independent suspension, multi link in the rear, McPherson's in the front on this. Um, the ride quality is very good. Uh, you know, it's not going to be like luxury good, but it's it's a, it's a nice solid uh, ride. It's not mushy. The suspension is well damped. Uh, you hit some hit some bumps, and it's literally one movement, boom, boom, and you're done. And that uh, abruptness doesn't get transferred in through into the chassis, so that's uh, that's good here. Six speed in this is is fine. It's solid. This has the intelligent manual transmission, which means it has rev matching. Now, depending on where you come from, rev matching in a manual transmission is either okay, cool or, oh my God, you have no talent. What are you doing? So, my background is from motorcycles, originally, although I've been involved in cars longer than I've been involved in motorcycles, but whatever, I raced motorcycles longer than I raced cars. Anyways, rev matching on a motorcycle? Yes, please, especially on downshifts, coming into a corner, braking, and then leaning it over. Yeah, if I can have, someone's gonna help me rev match and do that, great. Car people, I don't know, that it's like, you know, you, you you called their mother a bad name if you mentioned rev matching in a manual transmission. So whatever. Here it's fine. It works. It works good. We haven't really been at a place where we could really test it. We did a little bit in a couple corners here on the way out, but yeah, you know, it's fine. Now this is a two-liter inline four, naturally aspirated. It is. I may have the numbers off a little bit, but let's say it's 168 horsepower at about 6,600 RPM and 151 foot-pounds of torque at, say, 4,500 or 4,700. It's a, it's a bit higher number, but power's at the top. Shocking. No turbo yet. Um, possibly in the future, we'll get to that in a second. Steering feel is good. Um, you know, it's electronic steering, but it doesn't, it, it feels good. Uh, it, it has decent road feel, not fabulous, but for electric power steering, it's, you know, it's it's fine. The, the weight, the heft of the 
of the assist is, is nice. It doesn't feel overly boosted. So no fuel economy and no pricing on this, but based off of our driving of the Toyota IM just a little over a year ago, we'll guess that the pricing is going to be somewhere between $19,000 and $21,000. There, uh, there's gonna be two trim levels, an SE and an XSE. And right now there's one major problem if you're going, well, a couple of problems, if you're going to get the manual transmission, which makes no sense, but they say it's a packaging issue. So you can get a, I believe it's 800 watt, excuse me, 800 watt stereo system in this, in a CVT, but you can't get the, the good JBL system in with the manual transmission. And there was, I don't have my notes handy, so there was one other thing too, it was kind of a big omission in getting a manual. Are you gonna miss it? Uh, you know, why shouldn't they have figured that out a long time ago? But whatever. Um, but driving the manual is fine. Stop and go traffic. We were in a lot of it, uh, trying to get to the decent spot to drive. And uh, yeah, it's good. The clutch is very light. So would I want to do a lot of stop and go driving? No, but my knees are getting really bad. So that's a different story. Uh, the CBT, we drove that this morning. And for the most part, it's pretty good. It's not as CVT, it, it's more continuously variable than con, uh, constantly vexing, how's that? Um, the unique part of the CVT is that it actually has a physical first gear and then a clutch uh, between the rest of it which is, simulates 10 speeds and it's, you can get flappy paddles if you want to simulate your 10 speeds. It was fine, there was only one spot where we were climbing uphill on throttle and it just seemed to hang at a spot. It, it, it wasn't bad, the rest of the time wasn't that bad. So yes, you should get the manual, but the CVT is not horrific, so that's good. The instrument panel, if you get the SE, uh, is gonna be laid out a little bit differently. There, there's a 4.2 inch um, display uh, that's kind of to the right with uh, a lot of your technical stuff with your fuel and, um, sorry, I'm gonna fix my camera here if I can, is it slipped? Um, and in the XSE, you get a seven inch uh, display to give you much more information. So this, uh, we're currently driving with the seven inch display and it's nice, um, you know, kind of appropriate for, uh, for the class and not bad. They, then you have the uh, eight inch screen here for your telematics and uh, yeah, not bad there. In the XSE, you can get the connected car so that you can uh, do some things, uh, probably remote, well, I forgot what the whole list was, but again, we'll maybe we'll fill in here in a, in a graphic here for you, but uh, you can use your phone or your Apple watch to connect and uh, you know, location, you can get the location of your vehicle, remote unlock, probably start, uh, auto start, things like that. And uh, Apple CarPlay is available, so that's good. No Android Auto, but little steps, right? Interesting thing came out uh, in the briefing is that uh, another uh, colleague asked about how much information is being shared uh, from Toyota to, to Apple with Apple CarPlay. And they said that was one of the biggest reasons they've delayed so long in in, in implementing Apple CarPlay is because they viewed their the people who own their cars data and the privacy of it pretty you know it was important to them and the amount of data that had to be shared with Apple they didn't like so they apparently they have their own uh, their own agreement so that's pretty interesting so this is going to go up against the likes of Golf and Civic and uh, Focus and Subaru and Preza and, and the like so how does this compare? It's a little smaller than all of the above, especially the Civic. The Civic is a large vehicle for the class. This feels at the small end of it. Now for two people, it's good. Um, backseat room is a little tight. Uh, it's, there's, there's enough back there, but if you're say over 5'10", you're not gonna be wanting to spend a ton of time back there. But headroom is good. Uh, decent amount of hatch room. So uh, you'll be able to carry quite a bit there. And so, flat floor and the seats fold flat, which is always a big uh, bonus for us. It's a, a thing we look for. But how does it compare against the rest of them? Well, you know, would this be our first choice? Um, no. 
personal preference, right? So we would probably choose golf over all of them at this point. Yeah, golf or Civic, right? The, those are the two right now that kind of go head to head, at least for us as far as um, driving pleasure, um, fit, finish, and just what appeals to us, right? Now you may have different tastes and different styles that you'd rather have, and, and that's fine. Um, neither, neither is really a bad, a bad call. But this Toyota is actually pretty solid. A lot of the design language we've seen, at least in the interior and other vehicles, and it's good. The materials in here are nice, I will say. We've, uh, certainly better than a lot of others in the class. Best in class? No, but pretty close to it, I would say. Um, and again, at probably 20 grand, 22 grand, well equipped, uh, you know, that's gonna be really good value for money. It's fun to drive. Uh, you know, especially in manual. It was uh, it was a joy to drive in manual, and uh, like it. I like it a lot. I'm, I'm let's just say that I'm happy as a uh, in car enthusiast, even if this isn't like a true enthusiast vehicle, or you may not view it as. Um, that Toyota is making an effort to continue to populate a five-door hatchback vehicle into the U.S. market especially given the abundance of crossovers and SUVs that pretty much everyone can't get enough of. So the fact that they're offering this vehicle is fantastic. You might be lucky to sell, and I'm guessing at this point, 40 or 50,000 for the year. So props to uh, Toyota for continuing to support this category. So overall, liked it. Um, reasonably impressed with this car. It's good and um, Go take one for a drive when they come out. They'll be available in end of June, early July, I believe is what they said. End, end of June. And um, yeah, good looking car. Like the styling on it. Oh, the the, the blue on this, it's, it's kind of like the Ford uh, electric blue and the RS. Kind of that same color. It looks really good on this car. So uh, that about wraps it up for us here on uh, for this. So if you like, if you like what you see here, give us a thumbs up. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on RumbleStrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive.